Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's time to look ahead to Thursday's clash in the Europa League against Leo. Tonight, I'm joined by freelance uh, football writer Robin Berner. Um, thank you for taking the time to speak to us tonight, Robin. No worries at all. Um, first of all, before we before we get to how much a tall order this is going to be for Celtic, I want to talk about uh, Leo's league and form. How have they started the season? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, they're sitting second in, in France. Um, they're only behind Paris Saint-Germain and goal difference. Uh, they're the only team in Ligue 1 that's not lost the game yet. They've drawn a few, um, but they've looked very solid, um, particularly defensively. They've got the best defence in the league, only conceded four goals. Uh, they're improving going forward after a bit of a slow start. Uh, and they're looking really good. Um, there's a lot of flexibility to their team. Uh, it looks like they've got the tools to break down a lot of different opponents. So... Um, assuming they stay injury free and relatively fresh, it looks like they're going to be one of the main contenders in France this year. Yeah, do you think uh, last season, obviously they, they had a, a relatively strong finish, but um, do you think they can they can maybe even push? I know it's early doors, but PSG are so far ahead of everyone. But um, is there any sort of feeling that they could maybe push PSG a little this year? Um. I mean, I guess their goal ultimately is to get into the Champions League, not necessarily to to, to push PSG because, you know, as you say, PSG are, are in a completely different financial league from everybody else in France at the moment. So th their goal is definitely to get to finish in the top three in France. Um, if they can push PSG, then that's all the better. But I think, you know, that they're really just wanting to, uh, to to get Champions League football again next year. And if they can push PSG, that's an absolute bonus. Um, one of the problems is just sheer squad depth. I mean, juggling European competition and uh, French football at the moment is going to be an, a bit of a nightmare for them uh, because I think they play something like 15 games in 63 days. But then when you when you take into account there's an international break there as well, uh, the last two weeks, you know, they're effectively playing month, uh, sorry, uh, Thursday, Sunday, every single week till Christmas now. Uh, with, yeah. Aside from the international break, and they, they don't really have the squad to cope with that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's much like Celtic in terms of uh, fixture congestion. Um, how much do you think a priority the Europa League is for for them? Obviously, some of the bigger clubs tend to tend to turn their nose up at, at the Europa League. But do you think for Lille, um, it's a competition that they they take seriously and they want to to go deep into the knockout stages in? Well, it's, it's not a competition they're going to throw away lightly, put it that way. But at the same time, it's not it's not their number one priority. As I said earlier, mm. they want to finish in the top three. They want to get back into the Champions League to kind of elevate their status again. Um, you know, they'll rotate their squad. I mean, last week they, they changed about four or five players in their starting 11. Um, they're in a good situation at the moment because they don't have any injuries. They don't have any suspensions, so they can afford to do that. We'll probably see them do that again in midweek. Um, and it's a sort of competition that if they get deep into it and they're going okay in, in, in Liga and they're sitting to be top three comfortably or even if they're not going well, if they're, if they're well out of the top three then we can start to see them take it more seriously in the second half of the season. Yeah. How do you think um, their Celtic are viewed in terms of opponents for them? Obviously Celtic aren't in particularly good form at the minute uh, but we did have some, some good results in the Europa League group stages last season against Ren. Um, how do you think we're viewed in, in France and, and by Lille in, in general? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Celtic aren't any longer in the sort of upper echelons of, of European football. Um, but I think at the same at the same time, they're, they're an opponent to be, or the French see them as an opponent to be respected, if not feared. Um, everybody's aware of the history, uh, aware of the atmosphere that Celtic Park can generate, although obviously that's not a factor at the moment. Um, but they're certainly they're certainly seen as a team that are capable of being dangerous, and um, certainly people are aware of Odson Edouard and all the French players, Olivier and Cham. Mm. Uh, they're aware of the French players there and and what they're capable of. So, you know, Celtic won't be treated lightly. They won't be treated as a minnow, for example. But you know, they're not going to be held in the same regard as AC Milan, for example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Um, how do you expect that Lilo set up on Thursday? Are they are they playing almost a four four two domestically? Or I know you said they're they're pretty flexible, but um, do you expect them to play with with two up front on Thursday? Um, 
<coughs> excuse me, um, in League One they've played four four two almost exclusively, um, and it's effectively been it's almost been a four two four actually, uh, because they've deployed two outright wingers who have played quite high up the park. Um, last week in, uh, in in Prague they played with a four two three one, with Yusuf Yazici just behind a lone striker, and I, I think looking at the way they're likely to rotate for for tomorrow night's game, it's it's probably going to be that again. Um, they'll probably make another. I mean, the local press reckon they'll make four or five changes, and I think that's probably quite likely. Um, we might see some of their their sort of their big names drop out because they've got a league match against Leon on Sunday. Uh, Leon are going to be one of probably their main challenger for for the, the finishing in the top three. Uh, so I think we'll see them, you know, leave maybe some of their their bigger players out, the more informed players. Yeah, in terms of those those big players, um, obviously who who are the main danger men? We know Jonathan Bamba um, is a great player. He's been in good form this season. Akil Mas is scoring a lot of goals as well. They they brought in uh, Jonathan David for a lot of money as well. So, do you expect those three to start, and are those the the ones that could really hurt Celtic? Uh, Jonathan Bamba is one of the players that they're actually expecting to rest um, for the game. Okay, he, he's got he's got three goals and four assists in the league this season. So he has. There's no doubt he's been their main man so far, um, but again, he's probably going to get saved for for Sunday's match. He might get half an hour at the end, but I'd be very surprised to see him start. Um, Burak Gilmaz is the other guy. He's our top scorer this season with four goals in in, in the league. Uh, he's probably going to get rested. Uh, you mentioned Jonathan David there. He's come in and he's, he's really struggled. He's really really poor. At him. It looks like he's really low in confidence and. He's perhaps the only player in the whole squad that's that's in that situation at the moment. Um, mm. So you know he's out there and he's going to be get, he's going to be doing everything to try and score, uh, and they'll be doing everything to try and help him to score as well. Because as you say, they, they spent so much money on him. It's mm. it's important for him to be a success, and it's important for him to score soon as well. Um, in terms of the players that are going to play tomorrow, probably um, Yuzichi, as you mentioned, scored a hat trick last week. Um, so he's going to be obviously be a main danger man, but he's just going back from a very serious injury. He didn't really play a whole lot last season. He got injured. He moved to Lille at the start of the season and got injured, and he's so he's only really just coming back now. Um, so I think expecting a lot of consistency for him from him will be difficult. And I think of the players that play tomorrow. I think you're probably looking for for Jonathan Akoni to be the main man, mm-hmm. although he's notoriously wasteful in the final third. Um, but he's got a great reputation. He's capable of some wonderful things. His passing's excellent. He's he's a very dangerous player. He just needs to improve his consistency. Um, and it's a little bit of a surprise he's still at Lille actually, because in the summer he was being touted for a move, um, potentially as Jaden Sancho's replacement at Borussia Dortmund. So he's certainly somebody to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I watched the uh, Lille against uh, Lons a couple of weeks ago, and they were very very good. And Nikoni came off the bench. Um, and scored that night, so he will be a danger for us. What do you think, from a Celtic point of view, our best chances of of getting something from this game are? Um, how do you think we should approach it? Obviously, we're not playing well domestically. I think if we were in good form, we would hope to to go there and, and maybe get at least a point. But the way it's looking at the minute, we're we're really struggling. Do you think we're going to have to soak up a lot of Lille pressure and and try and counter to get anything? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I think Lille are a very flexible team. They're, they're they're capable of playing on the break, and they're also capable of breaking teams down. But I think I think they're most vulnerable where if Celtic were to to, to soak up pressure and try and counter them. Um, looking at the team they're going to play tomorrow, obviously I spoke earlier about Jonathan David not scoring many goals, uh, so they're they're going to be lacking a, a, a an obvious goal scorer. Uh, probably in, in the starting eleven tomorrow night, so they may not be quite as potent as as, as they would be expected. Um, certainly, defending set pieces, they can be a little bit weak. Um, and and then on the break, uh, in, in the heart of the defence, have got Jose Font, who's obviously well into his thirties now, mid thirties, and he's lacking a bit, a bit of pace. So that's something that can be exploited. They're likely to get their fullbacks quite far forward which again is something that can be exploited on the break. And also down the left, um, Ronaldo, who's probably going to come into the team, uh, can lack a little bit of discipline. So he's a player that they, that 
you know, that Celtic can get at. I, I think that's their best option to try and play on the break and try and catch Leal out, try and catch them making a mistake and, and just becoming indisciplined effectively. Yeah. Uh, last one. Last one. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, how do you how do you see the game going on, on Thursday? Yeah, I mean, as, as you mentioned, uh, everything's sort of going against Celtic at the moment in terms of um, having a lot having a lot of injury problems. Uh, the form's not good. Uh, and obviously they're away from home. Uh, for Lille, everything's kind of on the flip side. So they're in good form. They don't have any injuries at all. Um, and, and they're obviously playing very well and the confidence is high. So I, I think you'd be brave to back against Lille, to be honest. Yeah. Do you think, last one, sorry, is there any, going to be any supporters on, on Thursday? Um, that's a good question. I don't think there is. Um, okay. Certainly, I know Lille's, Lille's in the, the, the sort of red zone and there's a, there's a curfew in, in place, so people can't be out beyond 10 o'clock, I think. Um, I, I, can't remember, I can't remember whether it's early kickoff or late kickoff, um, but I, I don't think there's any early, supporters yeah. in it's the early kickoff. Um, yeah. It might be a thousand then. It's not going to be significant okay. for that one. Yeah, no problem. Um, Robin, thank you again for joining us. Um, your insight's greatly appreciated. That's it for the no preview, problem. folks. We'll be back tomorrow um, with the starting 11 prediction for the game. Don't miss that. Like the video, comment, read on thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.